After finding a book in a haunted house, a young girl realizes that the stories are happening in real life and will have to face her greatest fears to save her friends. Today we're going to recap the story of the 2019 movie, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. On Halloween 1968, a young girl called Stella is at home when she receives a call on the radio from her friends Chuck and Augie. Thinking they're looking for sweets, the girl says she's not up for it and is going to spend the night at home, but Chuck replies that it's not like that and that this will be the night of revenge, asking her to get all the eggs and paper she can. While the kids prepare their Halloween costumes, the bully Tommy stays in his mother's cornfield beating up the scarecrow Harold until he gets tired. Realizing that it's getting close to nightfall, he decides to go out with his friends and they start stealing the children's sweets, but unbeknownst to him, Stella and her friends have been waiting for this and have prepared a trap. When he sees Tommy's car, Chuck picks up a bag full of stinky slime and leaves it out in the open for the bully to pick up, making the car look like a mess and forcing the young man to stop and throw the bag away. As soon as he slams on the brakes, his friends start throwing eggs at the car and Tommy starts backing up to try and catch them, but Chuck was already expecting this and throws a bag full of burning poo into the bully's lap, causing him to lose control of the vehicle and smash through the fence of one of the houses. Furious, Tommy and his friends get out of the car and start chasing Stella's group to a drive-in movie theater. With the group of bullies still after them, the young men run out of options and decide to get into one of the cars to hide. Frightened by the intruders, Ramon orders them to leave and Stella begs him to let them stay, convincing him to cover their escape. Even so, Tommy manages to see them inside the car and orders everyone to get out, including the driver. Unlike the others, Ramon is not intimidated by the group of bullies and orders them to take his smell away from the car. At that moment, the parking lot security guard notices the movement and warns them that it is forbidden to stay outside the vehicle, telling them to get back in the car or leave. Finally at peace, Stella realizes that Ramon is a fan of horror movies and invites him to spend Halloween night in a haunted house. Even though it's a bad idea, he accepts the invitation and the four of them go to the Bellows' old house, an abandoned place where a terrible crime took place. Together, they break into the grounds and reach the gate of the house, which is locked with chains. Refusing to go back, Ramon borrows Chuck's pen and manages to break the lock with only his school supplies, allowing them to continue exploring the place. In the house, Stella tells them that the Bellows kept a daughter called Sarah locked in the basement and that she was forbidden to leave the house. For some reason, Mr. and Mrs. Bellows erased Sarah from all their photos to keep her existence a secret, rejecting her as a member of the family. But legends began to spread and the children of the town came to the house to hear Sarah's stories through the wall. Suddenly, some of these young people began to perish and Sarah was accused of poisoning them, but before the angry crowd could take the law into their own hands, she suffocated herself with her hair. Even after the young woman lost her life, rumors continued to spread and a new legend emerged saying that if someone visited the house and asked Sarah to tell a story, they would be trapped in her curse and suffer the same fate as the children. As soon as Stella has finished telling the legend, Ramon notices a hidden passage behind a shelf and they decide to open it, discovering the secret path that leads to the basement. Exploring the basement, they find another padlock door and unlock it with a penknife, gaining direct access to Sarah Bellow's old room. Upstairs, Chuck runs away from Augie and hides inside a cupboard to scare him, but when he decides to come out, he finds a totally different room and an old woman staring at him. Frightened, the young man closes the door again and listens for footsteps outside until he is found by Augie. In a panic, Chuck asks about the woman and runs to call Stella to get them out of there, but the girl is more concerned with exploring the basement and calls them both over. Together with her friends, she begins to wander around the room until she finds Sarah Bellow's own book of stories, supposedly written in the blood of her victims. In a panic, Chuck says they should put the object back and get out of there, but before they can do that, they are found by Tommy, who closes the basement, leaving them locked in. Along with him, Ruth, Chuck's sister, says that this isn't funny and that she'll tell the sheriff, which makes Tommy change his mind and tell her to open the door, pushing her inside as well. While the young men try to destroy the lock from the inside, Stella keeps looking at the book and takes one of the most insane actions possible, asking Sarah to tell her a story, which puts everyone under the bellows curse. Almost instantly, the lock opens by itself and they manage to get out of the house safe and sound, only to find Raymond's car completely destroyed by Tommy and his friends. Knowing that he has nowhere else to go, Stella says that Ramon can spend the night in the basement and takes him to her house, advising him to leave before his father wakes up. Alone in her room, Stella goes to bed and starts reading Sarah's book until she notices a new story being written right in front of her, that of Harold the Scarecrow. In the rural part of town, Tommy comes home drunk and gets a scolding from his mother, who orders him to get the eggs from the henhouse. Strolling through the cornfield with a full basket, 
Tommy kicks Harold as usual and continues walking with the eggs, but when he goes back to get more, he notices that the scarecrow is no longer there. Frightened, the young man begins to hear sounds around him, until Harold appears right in front of him, activating his joints and chasing Tommy with his body all twisted up. Desperate, the young man begins to run until he stumbles upon a pitchfork, deciding to use it as a weapon to pierce Harold's belly, but as it is an object, the scarecrow has no life and therefore cannot be harmed. Frightened, Tommy turns to run and ends up having his stomach pierced by his own pitchfork, causing strands of straw to run out of the wound. Even though he's injured, the bully continues to run while his body expels more and more strands of straw, only ending when Tommy turns into a scarecrow. The next morning, Ramon is at the mechanics with his car when the sheriff arrives asking if it was Tommy who did this to the vehicle. After the young man confirms it, the policeman says that Tommy was last seen arguing with Ramon at the drive-in and accuses him of having something to do with the disappearance, ordering him not to leave town until the investigations are finished. In the school auditorium, Stella talks about the story that has emerged and tells them that Tommy hasn't shown up at school, worrying that what has been written may have come true. Sensing her fear, Chuck takes courage and tells her about the old woman he saw hiding in the closet, but Augie is more skeptical and tries to reassure them that nothing happened, but Stella is still worried and asks Ramon to help her go to Tommy's house. After seeing the police investigating, the two start walking through the cornfield until they find Harold in Tommy's clothes, confirming that this is the end of the bully. Frightened, the girl decides to take the notebook back to the manor and puts it exactly where she found it, returning home soon afterwards, but when she gets there, she realizes that the book is back on her bookshelf. Suddenly, a new story begins to be written in the notebook and both she and Ramon try to tear out the pages to stop it, but the sentences keep being passed on to the next page every time they do this. Realizing that it's no use, Stella decides to read the story and realizes that the protagonist is Augie, becoming completely desperate. Wanting to help him, the girl picks up the walkie-talkie and tries to warn him about what's about to happen, but he's talking on the phone and can't hear a word she's saying. Distracted by the conversation, Augie finds a strange pot of soup in the fridge and decides to take it, thinking his mother left it for him, ending the call to eat and finally realizing that Stella is trying to talk to him. Curious, the young man asks what she wants and the girl tells him not to eat anything, because according to what is written in the notebook, a zombie body is wandering around the house looking for his thumb, and the missing limb is in something that Augie is going to eat. Thinking it's some kind of joke, the young man tells her that his father told him this story when he was little and tells her to try to scare Chuck, to convince him that Stella is telling the truth. Ramon takes the radio and starts reading the story out loud while Augie looks for the zombie body, but as he can't find it, he comes to the conclusion that they're joking and decides to eat the soup, putting the thumb that was hidden in the middle of the sauce in his mouth. Disgusted, the young man begins to feel sick until he hears the zombie asking who took his thumb, as well as some footsteps coming from outside. While Ramon and Stella run to try and help him, Augie hides in his room and listens to the undead getting closer and closer. The young man tries to jump through the jammed window and decides to hide under the bed, trying to make as little noise as possible while the zombie does everything it can to get into the room. Suddenly, the door opens slowly and Augie waits for the undead to enter, but it doesn't and he begins to suspect that it was all a figment of his imagination. After a while, the young man becomes calmer and starts to crawl out of bed, but when he's about to leave, he ends up being caught by the zombie and is taken to the underworld with no chance of defending himself, leaving only the marks of his fingernails on the floor. Feeling guilty about what happened, Stella arranges a meeting with her friends and tells them about Augie's disappearance, revealing that a new story has been written in front of them once again. Afraid that it will happen again, the girl says that they have awakened something dark and that everyone in the house will be the protagonists of their own stories. But Ruth thinks it's some kind of joke and says she has to go to her musical, leaving her friends alone. Wanting to end the curse, they have the idea of destroying the book with fire, but the object manages to emerge from the flames completely intact and Chuck is very frustrated. Thinking of ending the curse, Stella comes to the conclusion that they need to know more about Sarah and takes her friends to the library to check the records, discovering that the entire Bellows family disappeared less than a year after she took her own life. On one of the pages, Ramon sees that Sarah's father has left town without selling his property, leaving hundreds of thousands of dollars in his abandoned factory. Searching for his name in the book, Stella discovers that Diodit was the protagonist of one of the stories as well as all the other Bellows, signaling that none of them left but fell under Sarah's curse. While looking for more stories, Stella realizes that a new one is being written and discovers that Ruth is the protagonist this time. Unaware that her life is at risk, the girl is in her dressing room preparing for the musical when she notices a pimple on her cheek that is getting bigger and bigger. Ruth runs to the bathroom and notices that her cheek is swelling. While Chuck and the others are looking for her, 
The girl hears someone calling and turns to look, but when she looks back in the mirror, she realizes that there's a spider's foot sticking out of her pimple. Suddenly, thousands of arachnids start coming out of Ruth's cheek and spreading all over the bathroom, but the young men manage to get there in time to help and Chuck throws a bucket of water on his sister's face, managing to drive all the spiders away. While Chuck reassures his sister, Stella looks around and notices the silhouette of a woman in the shadows, making her imagine that it is the ghost of Sarah Bellows. Wanting to find out more about the family's history, Ramon decides to check the town's list of residents until he finds the address of Louise Baptiste, the daughter of the Bellows' former maid. When they arrive at her door, Chuck tells her that he's been having nightmares about a red room in which he finds a deformed, pale woman who whispers. This is making him increasingly frightened of the idea of Sarah using his dreams against him. As soon as Chuck finishes speaking, Louise's daughter answers the door and takes the kids to her mother, who completely ignores them. While waiting for an answer, Stella finds a music box identical to the one she saw at the Bellows house and decides to wind it up, prompting Louise to break the silence and say that Sarah loved that song. Taking advantage of her willingness to talk, Stella tells her that they have the book and Louise asks to take a look, revealing that she was the one who gave it to Sarah. Wanting to know more about the curse, Stella asks how the spirit can still write stories and Louise replies that she made a big mistake when she took the book away, as it made Sarah angry. Suddenly, Louise starts talking nonsense and her daughter appears to ask the visitors to leave, saying that if they want to find out more, they should go to the hospital where Sarah was admitted, as everything was recorded there. Listening to the woman's advice, they go to the clinic and ask if they can see a patient's records, but the nurse replies that the data is private and no one can access it, trying to convince the woman. Stella reveals that the patient in question perished almost 100 years ago and that they want to see the records for a school assignment. Convinced, the nurse fills out the paperwork and says they can come back in six weeks to pick up the records that are kept in the red room, which reminds Chuck of his nightmares. Since they can't wait six weeks, the teenagers take advantage of a moment when the nurse is distracted and infiltrate the restricted areas. Together, they start looking for the red room until they discover that red is just the acronym for the registration room. Even so, Chuck still refuses to go there and decides to stay behind while Ramon and Stella go on alone. Afraid of being caught, the young man decides to take the elevator to the top floor, but ends up getting stuck outside on the terrace and walks past three employees who are distractedly chatting. In this way, Chuck manages to get into the next building where he thinks he's safe, but the men see the door closing and start chasing him, forcing him to run to try and escape. Downstairs, Stella and Ramon arrive in the red room and find all of Sarah's records, discovering that she was interned by her own family and was supervised by Ephraim Bello, her own brother who subjected her to the most horrific therapies. Among the documents, Stella finds a strange object and Ramon recognizes it as a phonograph cylinder, the first form of audio storage created by mankind. Wanting to hear what was recorded inside, Ramon starts searching the warehouse until he finds a phonograph, allowing them to listen to one of the last interrogations they had with Sarah. Appearing to be badly hurt, the girl says she hasn't hurt anyone and ends up being electrocuted by Ephraim who insists she is lying. Even after the shock, Sarah continues to say that she didn't do anything and claims that she tried to save the children, but because no one would listen to her, they all ended up losing their lives. Insisting on her innocence, Sarah says that everyone was poisoned by the water that was contaminated with the mercury emitted by the factory, meaning that Diodit Bellows, Sarah's father, was actually to blame for the eliminations. Suddenly, the girl's voice changes and she says she's going to tell the story of the Red Room, which makes Stella remember Chuck and look in the book to see if a new tale is being written. Unaware that his story has begun, the young man keeps running away from the security guards who decide to set off the alarm, which turns all the lights red and starts Chuck's terrible nightmare. While his friends are looking for him, the young man goes through the corridors trying to find a way out, but no matter where he goes, he always comes across a tall, pale and extremely deformed woman who slowly approaches him. Desperate, Chuck tries to hide in some rooms and discovers that they are all locked, leaving him nowhere to run when the pale woman embraces him and absorbs his body leaving only his pen behind. After being found by hospital staff, Stella and Ramon are taken to the police station and told everything about Sarah Bellow's book, but obviously the sheriff doesn't believe them and accuses them of having a connection with the disappearance of their friends. Because of this, they end up being arrested and have to spend the night in the police station with the sheriff. In the middle of the night, the policeman finds Sarah's book wide open on his desk and finds a story that seems to have just been written. After reading everything, the sheriff goes to the cells and accuses Stella of having written it, but while she denies it, the police station is without power and the guard dog starts growling at a dark spot in the chimney. Imagining that a new story is taking place, the teenagers beg the sheriff to let them go and ask what is written in the book, but instead of answering, 
the policeman continues looking for what is scaring the dog. Already imagining that it will be his turn, Ramon remembers a camping story he was afraid of when he was little and says that something is coming to get him. Suddenly, a head falls out of the chimney and the sheriff spends all his ammunition trying to eliminate it, leaving him totally exposed as the rest of the creature's body falls out of the chimney and begins to gather. Again, the creature breaks the policeman's neck and throws his body at the teenagers, who are scared out of their wits. Trapped in the cage, the two can only watch as the twisted monster tries to get his head through the bars. Bracing against time, Stella reaches the sheriff's body and manages to grab the jail key, allowing them to escape while the creature's body is trapped in the bars. Free, they retrieve the book and get the key to the car so they can escape, but Ramon decides it's better to split up and suggests that Stella go to the bellows house while he tries to lose the creature. With the car, the young man drives calmly through the streets until the monster jumps on the windshield, knocking on the glass to try to catch him. Trying to bring the creature down, Ramon breaks abruptly and the monster manages to hold on to the hood, but the young man doesn't give up and has the idea of throwing the car against a truck, trapping the legs of the monster between the iron fittings. With the car wrecked, Ramon begins to flee on foot and doesn't see when the creature's body dismembers in one piece, reassembling itself when he leaves the vehicle. At the Bellows house, Stella asks Sarah to stop writing the stories and says she wants to help her, which transports her to a time when the house was not yet abandoned. Wanting to talk to Sarah, the girl starts looking for her without realizing that she is actually inside the book where her story begins to be written. Since she shouldn't be there, Stella decides to hide from the bellows who are going around the house looking for Sarah, but ends up in a room where she finds the same old woman Chuck saw in the closet. Wanting to escape, the girl turns to run and ends up seeing her reflection in the mirror, discovering that she looks like Sarah. Knowing she'll be arrested if she's found out, Stella runs into the dining room and hides under the table, only to be found by Diodit and Ephraim, who drag her by the hair down to the basement, dropping her glasses along the way. Outside the book, Ramon keeps running down the stairs until he twists his foot and falls with his hand on Stella's glasses, which for some reason allows him to hear her screams from the past. Wanting to help her, Ramon starts crawling towards the source of the sound and ends up being found by the creature that was hiding in the ceiling. Unaware that Ramon has also been captured, Stella is locked inside the basement and starts looking for a way out, not realizing when the real Sarah rises up behind her. Suddenly, Diodit's daughter begins to approach her, saying that she has one last story for Stella, but the girl refuses to listen and says that it's time for Sarah to hear it. Stella then starts to say that Sarah was the victim, but then she turned into the monster everyone accused her of being, so she is the only one responsible for the innocent lives she took. Realizing that she's got the spirit's attention, Stella says she's going to tell a story and Sarah hands her a pen, recommending that she use her own blood to write it down. The girl then pierces her finger and begins to tell Sarah's story, making it clear what the bellows have done. With her story finished, Sarah's spirit starts screaming and suddenly disappears, taking the girl out of the book and making Raymond's monster disappear. Realizing that everything is over, Stella closes the notebook and goes home where she begins to live a normal life, but determined to keep what she promised, she finishes writing the book with Sarah's story, revealing every detail of what happened. Even with the book published, Chuck and Augie haven't returned and Stella is certain that the notebook hides the secret to bringing them back, promising never to rest until she can save them. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.